Hi, my name is Jeremy Blossom. I'm the CEO and co-founder of StrikePoint Media. I'm gonna sit down with Danielle Cortman. She is our vice president and was one of the ones that was very strategic in taking an account from just a couple hundred thousand and scaling it to almost a million dollars in media spent. How did she do that? Learn about her processes, how she optimized the ad accounts, the campaigns, and landing pages to scale this to be one of our biggest accounts. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you want more amazing content. I'm sitting down with Danielle Cortman, our marketing director and the very first hire at StrikePoint Media to discuss something that all brands so desperately want to do, scale their ad accounts. Thank you so much for joining me, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Okay, so Danielle, you and your team helped take an account from a $250,000 monthly budget to almost a million dollars in spend every single month. Yeah. Right, which is absolutely incredible. And what, about five months? Yeah, about that. Okay, so I'd like to start off by asking you, when you first took on the account and you started to dive into what they're currently were doing from a media buying perspective, what were some of the things that you immediately did that helped grow their account and see the success that you were able to get? So one of the things that we did is we did an audit of their, their different funnels and campaigns and you know saw what was working with their current channels and what wasn't. And we identified, you know, sources that were opportunities for them for growth. So, you know, new channels that they weren't advertising on previously. Um, and, and some others that really, you know, looking at the stats were just not hitting the mark. So we, we basically just, you know, analyzed our spend and made some cuts and, uh, you know, increase in other areas. So that's a pretty daring thing to do. A lot of agencies will come in and they just want to make some tweaks, right? To go and implement completely brand new channels must have been a little bit of a like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make this happen. What were some of the things that you were afraid of would happen introducing you know, a brand new media channel to their mix? I mean, the, the thing that you're most afraid of is it doesn't work. And so, yeah. you know, we have test budgets set aside for that. So if, you know, we would set aside, you know, $5,000 and, and give it a shot on a new channel. And if, if it, you know, we didn't see any signs of life, then, you know, we cut that. But if we do see signs of life with certain ads, we can, you know, get a certain cost per acquisition. Um, CPA on on different ads and campaigns, then you know we'll put more resources and effort into to seeing if we can scale that. So I love that signs of life. Let's let's kind of dive into that a little bit because that's how you guys were effectively able to go from a test budget of five thousand dollars on a channel to some of the channels. What's what's like an average budget per month on one of those new channels now? Um, I think at one point we're spending or we're, we're spending about 300000 Yeah, so from $5,000 test budget to over $300,000 in a that month. That was just on one campaign. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so signs of life. What were some of the early things that you guys were looking for for like so quote unquote signs of life for those ads? So a lot of times it's, um, you know, looking at to see if it had a good click-through rate. Maybe the return on ad spend or the ROAS was down, but the click-through rate was good. So maybe there's some things that we could optimize there. A lot of times um, average order value, sometimes it'll be, you know, higher or lower for different sources. Did you know kind of instantly when you started on some of these channels that it was going to work or was it kind of off to a little bit of a rocky start? Um, no, we, ha we had a rocky start on some. So Live Intent was, is a really, has been a good source for us. So trying to figure out, you know, what worked best for this campaign, um, testing a lot of different ads and messaging and, and also testing ads that were a lot less designed than, than we thought. So having just some plain text and that's actually was, you know, one of our best performing ads. So the ad creative, and before we go into that a little bit, so what's, what's Live Intent for those that may not be familiar with that platform? We, we love them, by the way, they're great. Yeah, so Live Intent is an email marketing platform. So they basically do in email um, banner ads. Great. And so now the ads themselves, when we first started off into that channel for this client, you were saying that we over designed the ads? Yeah, they were over designed. Um, the messaging wasn't necessarily quite right, you know, as we were getting to know their offers and really what worked and what didn't. So those are some of the main things. And then we, which and is. And also the audience is a big thing too. So identifying audiences that works. Yeah, we kind of had an idea of what their audiences mm -hmm. were, but we really had to go and finesse them specifically in some of these um, tra new traffic channels, right? Right. 
But I love what you said about like the over-designed versus like more of a basic design. Can we talk about that for a second? Sure. Okay, so so many brands um, have these really, really great ideas for an ad. And they spend a ton of time over designing ads that look really, really great, yeah. but end up not converting. And we are just as guilty sometimes. We have, we have the best intentions. We'll make an ad, we'll design it, and it's too designed. Can you go into like what happened a little bit from the design on Live Intent and then the basic versions of the ads that did so much better? And why do you think that happens? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, keeping in mind where the ad lives. So if you're on an email and, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of articles that are, you know, like an email newsletter and, you know, there'll be an image and a headline and some text. Sometimes they'll just be, you know, a headline and text. So um, that's where a lot of these ads were going. And so the ads that did work had really just kind of looked like a bold headline and, and a button or, you know, a description below. So it, it would, kind of natively the, fits into the platform. It's, or, it didn't look like an ad. Right. It didn't look like an ad. Yeah. Which yeah. is like the best type of advertising is when, right. or the best type of salesperson isn't someone who sounds like a salesperson. They, you know, they sound like a normal person and an ad didn't look like an ad. It right. looked like something that was inviting. What did the, 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 the over design, was it like really brand heavy? What was the things that stuck out to you from the things that were too much designed? Yeah. Brand heavy. I mean, I think you know, it's, it just, it looked like an ad, just like you're saying, you know, I think today you're, you're so, um, we get so many ads all the time that it's very easy just to glaze over that. Um, especially when you're looking at an email. So. Yeah. Good point. All right. So when we started getting into these new audiences, uh, or new traffic sources, how much of a new audience was a part of it? Did we try to keep it like same audiences, just new traffic sources, or did we also implement or broader scale or try new audiences with inside of some of these platforms? Yeah, so I think it's a mix of both. Um, we generally, you know, would take the audience at work and of course try to apply that to every platform and then explore new audiences. So, you know, if the product too is slightly different, then we would, you know, add different audience types there or different keywords um, based when, on the funnel itself. When you would run these tests, so would you run a specific test for like an audience was like, okay, we're gonna test this type of audience or was it that granular when you were trying to scale this account or was it like, okay, audience and ad or audience and offer? Like, can you go into like how granular you got some of these tests in these new platforms in the beginning? Yeah, um, I think it was a combination of both. So like matching up like a couple different offers to a couple different audiences. As these campaigns started to work. You started with the cost per acquisition, as you mentioned, was one of the, the key performance indicators that you were looking at, and they started to work. Um, what was the scaling strategy that you and your team implemented from a dollars and, and cents perspective? Yeah, so um, well, so what we do is we look at our numbers daily. So every morning our media buyers are in there and they're reporting on the spends from the day before. So that really helps us look at trends. So we're looking at you know, our return on ad spend and our cost per acquisition, um, usually like on a, on a seven day um, rolling basis. And and also once we see um, stats that are above our target, so if our target is 60% on our return on ad spend, that's really like for the specific client, our, our biggest um, KPI, CPA is second. Um, and once we see it start to go above, so at one point we were getting, you know, 200% consistently over and over. So, you know, we were trying to scale as fast as we possibly can in massive increments because we had room. So um, that's where people can sometimes get greedy is they're like, oh, I'm getting 200%, like, let's just leave it here. And, and that's really good. But if you can spend, you know, three or four, five times as much, yeah, maybe your return on ad spend is going to go down, but you're going to get a lot more customers. So yeah. in the end, you're going to get a lot more back on your money. Yeah. We've talked about this. Um, you said that's one of the biggest lessons that you've learned from this was that, you know, when you get something that's really, really working, it is always better to try to continue to scale that. And people are, are afraid that, oh, a 200% number is going to go down and they're not doing the math or they're not looking at it the right way. Really, it does come down to getting as many new customers as you possibly can mm -hmm. versus just trying to continue to hit that uh, return on ad spend that so many people are so obsessed with. But, you know, like you said, the, the ROAS is going to like start to deteriorate. Can you tell me what, what it started to feel like when you got some of these budgets to $300,000 a month 
And then the return on ad spend did started to slip. Like, did you guys try new tactics? Was it, you know, new audiences? Did you try to, did, were you tempted to scale down some of the budgets during that time? Yeah, we were, um, and we did. We did scale down sometimes when things were not working or dropping below, you know, our target metrics. But you know, one of the things that's always been important is to constantly be creating new campaigns to test, um, but also to continue to test the one that's that is winning. Because yeah. you know, if you know you have a winner, then continuing to optimize and test that and add new, you know, new variants and add new angles, and also especially if it's timely. Um, you know, add new things that are that are happening in the world to kind of tie into your campaigns to keep it fresh. Um, so that's something, you know, our winning campaign was refreshed, or it has been, it's still running, it's been refreshed, you know, four or five times. Wow, that's incredible. So what'd we do? How'd we refresh it? What were some of the like things that we've done to keep it as active as it's been? So some basic things are just testing new headlines, um, you know, on the sales pages. Um, but also, oh, so we're going past just ad creative. We're actually getting right. into the landing pages and sales pages. Oh, great! Yeah. Oh, ad creative. We're updating, you know, on a on a monthly, weekly basis. It just, you know, really depends. We're always adding new variants in. Um, but yeah, so actually going to the sales pages, testing new headlines, and even going as far as updating, you know, the promo itself to, you know, writing some new intros. Um, to test those different angles. So one of our core values at StrikePoint is win even when we lose, because we make mistakes, right? Right. What were some of the mistakes that we made along the way of trying new channels and trying to scale this account? That's yeah, the there was definitely a mistake that we, um, that we made. Uh, we created an ebook for an, a lead gen um, to add on to the, you know, the front of a sales letter. And it was just a total mismatch and mm. it just did not work. It didn't, it wasn't the right, it wasn't targeting the right demographic that the sales letter was. And so people were just not converting. They were converting on the ebook and were really interested in that, um, but just not interested on, in the next step. So we got a really low cost per lead because people were interested in that, but absolutely nobody wanted anything to do with the right. thing that we're trying to sell. They didn't buy. Yeah, yeah. so that's a good lesson. Why did we try to implement a lead magnet in the beginning? What was like the logic behind that in the first place? Um, you know, the client thought that it was a new audience that they wanted to explore to see if it could work for their product. Um, and so, you know, we gave it a shot. But it, it just ended up being, you know, the wrong, the wrong match. Yeah. From a reporting standpoint, does anything change if we're spending $100,000 a month or if we're spending a million dollars a month? There's a lot more line items. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, good point. But, yeah. but otherwise, it's pretty much the same, right? Everything right. else is pretty much the same. Some more things, you get maybe some more data. Uh, but otherwise it's, it's probably the same. That's what I wanted you to say, because a lot of advertisers think that there's all of a sudden 10 times more work that needs to be done because the budget's 10 times greater. And if you do it right and you scale a really winning offer or campaign, you're just scaling ad dollars and not necessarily having to scale a bunch of other stuff too, mm -hmm. which I think is really an important lesson that we've also um, learned during this process. Anything else that stands out about our journey to scaling an ad account to a million dollars a month? You know, I think another thing that I've actually learned from you, which is something that we've we've definitely implemented on this account, is uh, marketing loves speed. So being able to get things up really quickly and, you know, might not be perfect, but let's get it up and test it, see if the messaging sticks, and then, um, you know, we'll put more time and effort to it. And that's what we've been doing a lot too with our ad creative and our uh, our video ads. Yeah, it's a machine, right? At the end of the day, um, these ad networks out there, if they they're smart. The algorithms are dialed in. The pixels are in our favor finally as advertisers. Right. And it's more just about giving that machine as much data as possible to continue to find the audiences that want our products and services at the end of the day. So I love that. Well, as a marketer, how do you get inspired every single day to come in here and take that next client of ours from a quarter of a million to a million dollars a month in spend? You know, I am just obsessed with results and numbers, so I'm constantly looking at our numbers every day. And so being able to see, you know, campaigns that are, are going up and, and scaling up is just really, it's not inspiring, but it's like exciting for me. So I just, I love that, I'm obsessed with that. But, um, but I get inspired every day just by looking at other people's ads that are constantly, you know, and when I'm on social networks myself, I just, I see people's ads and I constantly get new ideas there, so. 
What would you say to a brand that is struggling like our client was? They were at that quarter of a million dollar a month for over a year. They just couldn't quite, you know, figure it out. What would you say to, a, to an agency, a marketer, or a brand that's stuck at a certain ad, ad spend? I would say um, know your numbers. So that's one thing that's really important. And, um, and just keep on testing, test, test, test. Test, 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 I love it. Well, there you have it, everyone. If you've got any questions for Danielle or us, comment below and she'll get right back to you. And if you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button and thank you so much for watching. Great job. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me.